Cool. What's up, everyone? Episode four of the Gimme Mo Live video series. Um, just to recap, the reason why I'm doing this series is to help you make better music. Um, there's a bit of a gathering happening at our place tonight, so if there's a bit of background noise, I do apologize. Um, but you know, I'm doing this series to help everyone to make everything that you do and we do uh, easier, help you to make better decisions, make better music, uh, make less mistakes. So, let's recap. Last three weeks, I've covered, you know, I did an overview video, I spoke about cake and music, which was funny as well. Um, but I did it and then what else did I cover cake and music and then last week I spoke about or two weeks ago I spoke about where do you start what do you do how do you tackle it and then actually in the third video in episode three I actually fielded a lot of questions a lot of live questions that I answered live and between the last video and today I actually received a very good question, a very, very, very good question, uh, which I'm going to answer a little bit later on. So what's today's video about? Well, today's video is about everything that everybody loves, which is usually gear. Well, in my case, it's gear. Now, what gear should I get? Uh, what What's going to make me make better music, etc. And usually this is something that, you know, I call it gear lust, where gear, your, your lust for more gear takes over. And people have this perception that the more gear they have or gear that is perceived to be better or something that's read online, you know, somebody, People love a site called Gear Sluts where people, all they do is just sit and talk about gear all day. Should I get this mic? Hi guys, I, I need a new microphone preamp. I need this, I need that. Now, what people fail to understand is that you actually don't need all of those things. Everything that you need, and I can just pull out my, my spare sound card. Everything you need in today's world can be, you know, can be found in a little unit like this. So, I said I'd do a studio tour, show you some of the gear I have. This is a PreSonus Audio Box USB. It's a two input, two output um, audio interface. So it has two preamps. It's got a headphone headphone amp um, it's got a MIDI in and out as well however some of the best music that I've made and released that still plays on the radio was recorded and mixed through the converters from this box as well as the preamps stock preamps no external preamps right so this costed about 2000 bucks a good couple of years ago and I didn't just buy this I didn't just buy this audio interface just because I needed one. I already had an audio interface, but what I was looking for was something that was strong, robust, something that I could drop on the floor and it would still work. Now, if you go and look at the original release trailer for this, um, they actually show you a box that's that, that's driven over by a truck. That's thrown around, thrown up in the air, it lands on the ground, and then they take it straight into a studio, and they actually record through it, and it sounds fantastic. Now, in terms of what you hear usually in marketing videos for, for gear, when they play you the audio that's been recorded through a box, they don't play you the raw audio, they play you the mixed audio, right? But again, like I said, I didn't buy this because of the way it sounded, I bought it so that I had a mobile, relatively small audio interface 
that connects via USB, no power cable at all, so it's bus powered by USB, and I could take it with me if I needed to do location recording. And it's actually something that I refuse to record, and there's a song that it's, that's releasing pretty soon, I'm really excited about it. Um, that's the song that I spoke about in the previous video where I did some uh, gang vocals and crowd vocals for. I recorded that through this. So when the artist is ready, I'll talk about this little box. Now, we tend to overcomplicate everything when it comes to music and audio equipment and we lose sight of what's important which is actually our creativity, our songwriting, our melodies, our vocals, um, staying on key, harmonies, you know, our, our creative side. It's something that we all forget. Yes, there are technical things that are important but for a lot of us, we use that technical knowledge in a creative way to stay creative. I mean, as aspiring artists, established artists, music producers, uh, upcoming music producers, beat makers, uh, mixing and mastering engineers, we use our craft and our technical knowledge in a creative way to make people feel a certain emotion. So not only getting a song to sound great, but making it feel great for the listener. Now, I get a lot of questions, um, uh, funny enough, a ton of questions, believe it or not, where I'm asked, yo Mo, so I've got this particular sound card and you know, my mixes aren't sounding that good, my recordings aren't sounding that good, and you know, I think if I get a new interface, you know, that will actually, that will actually make my music sound better. And then I would ask the person, so tell me, tell me the techniques that you're using. Where are you standing? What are you recording through? What is the gain? Um, again, I'm not going to go through. I'm not going to go through um, some of the, the the finer details that can be checked out on YouTube. Thanks, Marlon. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, really awesome tracks uh, by Sage, which you guys can hear soon. Um, I think. I don't want to say too much, but there's an event happening this Friday. Kaimek is there. Kaimek is playing. You might just drop a track or two by Sage. Um, uh, just to give you guys context, uh, Marlon is speaking about Sage, an artist who I mi I mastered two songs for. Uh, really, really, really good up-and-coming artist. Um, these tracks are his first two tracks that he's releasing ever. Um, so again, to go back to last week's episode and the, uh, episode two as well, have more people listen to your music, not just your friends, right? Let go. So being creative can be a, a fr very frustrating, a very, very fr frustrating thing. Um, we tend to sit and make the same style of music or we use the same chord progressions over and over and there's nothing wrong with that. But when you are being creative, you need to you need to really, really push the boundaries. Now, there is a saying that goes that you know you need to stick to what you're good at. You know, play to your strengths. Now, the way I treat it in my environment, in my studio, when I'm making music, is to actually not play to my strengths. What I do is. I, well, I not only play to my strengths. So what I do is I do what I know I'm good at, but I work on, I work on improving on the things that I know I'm not good at. And the difficulty with everybody in today's times is we refuse to believe that we are not good at something. You know, in the Google age, everybody thinks that, you know, everything is just a Google search away. But, um, you know, knowledge can be toxic. Knowledge can be toxic, right? So we, we feel like we can Google everything and we have all the answers, but we don't have the answers because we haven't experienced some of the things that we need to do. So there's also a saying that says 10,000 hours. Do you 10,000 hours? So what that means is you need to really be grafting and doing as much as you can to be creative and make more music. I can't stress that enough. I say that. I've said that in all of my 
my my videos in the series where I'm saying people just need to make more music. Whether you like the music or not, whether you think it's a good song or a great song or a really bad song or a song that you will never personally release, in order for you to grow faster as a musician, as an artist, as a producer, as a songwriter, you need to finish those songs, even if you're going to store them. You never know who might come along and somebody buys the song. Um, now, today I said I'm going to do a little mini studio tour. Um, and I'm going to do that right now. However, I feel like I need to tell you guys where I was last week. I, I, I promised that I do one I do one song a week. Um, I've been so blessed to get a lot of work from a lot of both up and coming artists and established artists. Um, so last week was quite a busy week for me. I mixed quite a lot of tracks. I mastered quite a lot of songs. Um, I had quite a few recording sessions and I had planned on doing on this video on Saturday that just passed. However, I was just so tired. Even Saturday, for most of the day, I was recording uh, Leah Hart and Jaxie. Such an awesome song. So glad to have the ladies in studio. What a talent, really. Leah Hart, what a talent. Um, so I recorded some vocals for them. And I'm going to tell you what I recorded through, how I recorded things, why I, why I do it. But most importantly now, when I do this tour and I show you the pieces of equipment that I have and that I use, don't look at it and think, wow, Mo is using this piece of equipment or he's got this piece of gear and that's why his music is sounding so great. Let me give you a tip. The best single most best oh my english is horrible with this one but i'm just trying to emphasize this the best tool and piece of gear that you have as an artist a musician a music producer an engineer mix for mixing or mastering is your ears right i'm not going to go into a lot of detail in that in this video i'm actually saving that for another video but your ears are the most, are your most important tool. You need to know what sounds good, what doesn't sound good. Um, the different thing, uh, things that sound different that might fit into a song. Maintaining the vision, making sure that the, the initial vision for the song is actually what you end up with. Because a lot of the time that doesn't happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my phone off the tripod and I'm going to show you some of the gear that I use. Here we go. Switch the camera. Let me get down low here. So I use an iMac. That is a surprise day for you. Do you need to use an iMac? The answer is no. You could use a PC, you could use a laptop, uh, you could use your phone, I don't care what it is. You don't need to be using a Mac, you just need a machine that you can record your music to. Now, in today's times, you can do that on a phone, you can do that on an iPad, you can do it on any tablet, um, any PC, almost anything you buy today is absolutely perfect. But at this moment in time, I'm using an iMac. Right now, a lot of people ask me, Mo, what studio monitors do you use? I use Yamaha Yamaha HS fifties, and with the Yamaha HS fifties, I use the HS ten sub. Um, yeah, it gives me a nice balanced sound. I've got the sub tuned to the room. I know what I know how good my room sounds. Um, I know what sounds good in my room rather and yeah they've served me pretty well then I want to move down to my studio rack gosh that's so dark let me see if I can get a there we go so I've got a a channel audio interface called the Focusrite Liquid 56 Right, I've got this thing for the last, oh, 
maybe eight years i don't know i don't know when it released whenever it released that's when i got it and the important thing about this piece of equipment is that i didn't buy it just because you know i i, I just wanted another piece of gear every single piece of gear that i have bought i have bought for a specific purpose now if you know if you've seen my previous videos i spoke to you about how i learned i learned to do what i do in studio and one of the biggest things that i love to do is record live music so yes sample based production and vsts are awesome but I love recording live music, live instrumentations, you know, having a, a, a beautiful, beautiful vibe and feeling recording a group of musicians playing together. So I bought this audio interface so it would allow me to record multiple inputs at the same time. So in video number two, I think it was episode two of the series, I played a song by Rushdin Jazz called Until I Find You. In that song, there's a live bass, live guitars, live keyboards, two live keyboards, in fact. And all of those things are recorded simultaneously through these stock, stock, stock preamps. All right. Now, I'm going to show you two other pieces of gear. Now, this blue one with the yellow... This was a gift to myself. Yes, I gifted myself something. Now, why is that important? Um, you know, we work hard at what we do. We need to enjoy life. And for me, I, I, I used Focusrite preamps before. I've used Neve preamps. I've used different types of preamps. But for the work that I do and needing to have something that's versatile, Especially, I love recording. Um, uh, I love to mic up acoustic guitars with two mics. I, I really love this preamp. It's it's absolutely world class, but it's a gift to myself. Right? I use it on almost everything, but it was really a gift to myself. Do you need it? No. If you had it, would it be fantastic? Always. Then we get to this channel strip at the bottom. Which is called the, uh, it's by Art, Applied Research and Technology. Um, and it's called the Voice Channel. Now, it's a tube, it has a tube output. Is it a tube output? Yeah, tube output. So it's got a microphone preamp over here. You can set the impedance level. I'm not going to speak about what impedance is. It's got a compressor section over here. It's got a de which is really cool. It's got a gate. Uh, you can increase the voltage, which is fantastic. I've got a little EQ section over here. I can bypass the EQ. I can make the EQ before the compressor or after the compressor. And then I've got my little output section and a digital output as well. Now, I love to use the art preamp on bass. Uh, sometimes if I record through this preamp, I will come out of this preamp into the insert point of this unit. Uh, just so that I can use the, the um, compressor and EQ section and sometimes the gate. And then I go straight into this over here. Now. Oh, my tripod has just fallen. Give me a second. I just messed that up. Stand this thing up. There we go. Now, do you need all of this equipment? My answer to you is no. Right? I've bought each and every one of these pieces of equipment as a gift to myself. Now, there used to be a little red box right over here. 
And that box is actually sitting on top of a cupboard now. I was recording vocals to a song that um, I'll be releasing in two weeks time. Last week. And it actually broke. Uh, I was pretty bummed about that. But it broke. I recently acquired a new piece of gear. Um, that people are very fanatical about. Uh, you know, people when people see it, they think, wow, you know, that's that's the dream. This is what I need. This is what I want to do. But um, I actually don't need it. Again, I, I this was a gift to myself because I'm getting so much work. I'm so blessed to, to receive so much work and to work with so much people. Um, I invested in my studio, which is something that I said last week. Where people need to invest in this studio and this is my latest addition to my studio it is the Apollo Universal Audio Apollo Twin Mach 2 and the great thing about this unit is is that everything that's in my equipment rack is connected to this unit uh, via a digital cable now, the reason why I bought this unit was because, let me see if I can turn this on now, there we go. The reason why I bought the Focusrite was because, ah, what's wrong with my tripod now, here we go. Oops, there we go. The reason why I bought the Focusrite, I mean the... Universal Audio, get this a little bit closer, is because I'm doing location recording now. And when doing location recording, um, especially if it's just for a vocal or a, a you know, a, a single or a single source or two sources that I need to record, you know, it's quite an effort to try and cart all of this all of the different pieces of equipment that I have around because I'm somebody who commits to what I'm recording why am I burping so much tonight wife's food was good um, I record with compression I record with EQ and I commit to what I'm doing so yeah that's the reason why I got the Apollo it allows me to record all of my sources directly through you know the universal audio plugins, the LA2A's and the Neves and the Pultex, whatever they've got. And the Unison preamp sound really cool too. But do you need that as an aspiring producer or musician or songwriter? You don't need all of those things. Trust me, all you need is a two channel interface. Yes, I still got this thing. I still travel with it depending on the situation. If it's something quick and I'm in a hurry, I grab this thing. This is the one I grab. Right, so people always ask me, so if, if that's the box you used, what work did you record and release through that? Um, Turn It Up by Lloyd Jansen, I think that was about 2010, 2011. Um, recorded, mixed, mastered through that box. Um, Jared Ricketts Stay, Jared Ricketts, uh, what's the other one that I did? Um, Jared Ricketts Dismissed, that, that one, also through that box. Jared's doing some awesome things now. Uh, Take Me To Your Heart, fantastic track produced by Mr. Mellum, as well as New Life. Um, Ryan, who actually sent me some really good questions, which I spoke about at the start of this video. Um, he sent that to me, um, uh, the questions that I'm going to answer, and I think it's a very valid question. Um, I'm not going to answer that yet, Ryan. Um, but your qu basically the question is, what does a producer do to get the best out of an artist? And how does an artist ensure that a producer can get the best out of him or her? Hi, Simon. Thanks for the support. 
Uh, again, guys, if you just joined, it's the first time you're seeing um, one of my live videos. This is something that I'm doing once a week. It's a live video series where we get to interact, where we talk about all things music, gear, songwriting. Let's just interact. I'm here to answer your questions, share my experiences, share my opinions. And one of the experiences that I, I'd like to share with you now is a song that's going to be releasing really soon. I'm meeting with the artist and um, the artist and her husband on Friday evening this week to talk about how we're going to be releasing this song and, and you know how we really do it, how we approach radio, etc. And the greatest thing in, 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 in us recording this song, and it's a pop song, like a true pop song, it's catchy, it's, you know, in terms of lyrics, it's easy to remember, but it's got a powerful message. Now, with this song, we created the song, um, you know, through a personal experience that the artist went through. Again, sorry for the noise, guys. There's a bit of a gathering happening at our place that I didn't know about. But this video needed to happen. And... Coming back to the song, when we started working on the song, the artist actually came to me and said, Look, yeah, this is, you are my lyrics. And I told her, do you have any chords for the song? And she said, yes. And I said, play it. She played the chords. She sang. Um, it sounded great. It was an incorrect key because I felt like I needed to be higher. But we sort of pieced this song together as a team as opposed to them leaving me alone to do whatever I wanted to because it was such a personal song for the artist. Anyways, let's fast forward to where we are now in post-production. I'm going to be mixing the song either later this evening or I'll start on it tomorrow evening. While we were recording the song, we did some crowd vocal recordings, uh, which I did again through this. If you don't believe me, go and check my Facebook page, my Instagram page. I've got a picture of this with my MacBook I recorded everything through this. But the artist didn't hear those crowd vocals on the night that we recorded everything. right? Because I just recorded everything in. I had my headphones on. I said, I've got what I need. And I brought it back to my studio. And when I put it in the song, not even the artist, when I put those audio tracks in the song and I played it back, it sounded so great. I mean, I had this vision for this particular part of the song, which I thought would just lift the song even more. And it sounded absolutely fantastic. And when the artist eventually came in to do the final bit of vocal, lead vocal recordings, you know, to see an artist actually get emotional for a piece of work that you've helped them to do, right? That's that makes me feel good as a producer. And, and that's the type of producer that I am. I'm here, as, and I repeat this, I've said it in, in, in one of the previous episodes of, my life, of this video series, where my main goal and my main priority is to be the physical tool that allows the artist to get their ideas down when they can't. Right? And that's most of the artists that come through my door. I'm here to help you. I do get artists that come through who are actually producers in their own right. And they bring me their songs to try and elevate it to the next level. Make it radio ready, make it album ready, um, mix it, master it. But to really, you know, give it a different spin or a different, different type of sound that they're going for. Um, I'm very blessed and, and I'll say it outright. I know I said I wouldn't, you know, I like to keep things to myself, but... A really, really, really good friend of mine as well. Um, Jean on Gansey. Um, I'm sure all of you know his song that, I mean, he's, he's been on Expresso and on all of these different radio stations uh, with a song that in fact was also produced by Mr. Mellum uh, called Take Me Away. I'm doing a song with him now. Uh, I worked with him a couple of years ago and I absolutely loved it. Great, loved working with him. Great guy in studio and outside of studio as an artist, as a person. You know, go follow him. He's got a show coming up as well. Now, you know, seeing an artist really light up and their face light up because you did a song for, uh, you know, because the song you're doing for them sounds so great. is such a satisfying feeling and it's not a, 
it's not something to feed an, an, an ego because you know I'm not that type of person it's just seeing that person's reaction and your personal feeling now we live in an age where you know our kids and oh, what's in my mouth where our kids are running on the beach and instead of sitting and enjoying those times with our kids we just want to take photos we just want to snap everything we don't want to experience anything anymore we need to enjoy those little pieces of magic and those experiences when we see an artist's face light up you know an artist really thinking wow I never thought I never imagined that my song could sound like this and that that's really what it's about guys it's about making music that makes you feel good and make other people feel good um, thanks Kyle Kyle's agreeing with me uh, that's Kai Mac everybody who I spoke about at the beginning of the video um, he's got a really cool gig coming up this week my man's worked hard on the set buy your tickets go and watch now I want to talk about um, or, or, or attempt to answer the question that was asked to me this week um, well it's it's the best I don't want to say there's a there are bad questions but the most interesting question because in the first three episodes the questions that I got were really simple how do I do this where do I get that how do I contact this person etc right so the question that was that I was asked was how does a producer ensure that they get the best out of an artist and how does an artist know that the producer would get the best out of him or her now it's got nothing to do with music yes I know that it's important for the producer and the artist to have an ear for music but I, this is the way I look at it you we all have friends we all make friends sometimes we meet people and we're just not vibing you know we they've done nothing wrong there's no argument there's no disagreement you know we just we're not getting along and these people are making a lot of noise now I apologize if it's distorting what I'm saying and you can't hear what I'm saying um, it's all about people skills it's all about from a producer point from a producers point of view in my personal experience and again like I said I've done this for more than a decade it's all about making the artist feel comfortable and different people you know find comfort in different things for example uh, that song that I spoke about earlier that I'm going to be mixing um, either later this evening or sometime tomorrow what made this artist comfortable while recording vocals for example was to turn the lights out so the part the only light that this artist saw was coming from my two speakers and some from the computer screen and this artist needed that because that allowed the artist to block out everyone in the room because I wasn't the only person in the room right uh, there was somebody else there as well and that's what made the artist comfortable some artists will tell me no listen Mo I need you to drill me I need you to tell me what I'm doing wrong and and you know depending on your people skills and your personality you need to pick up on those things um, what I find is awkward silence sometimes brings out uh, a reaction from an artist so let's say it's recording vocals and the artist says uh, the artist records and we press stop and the artist says so, so what did you think of that and you listen to it you press stop you don't look at the artist and you just be quiet just to see the type of reaction that you're gonna get right so from an artist point of view I'd say be open and honest as possible um, and you know you need to be uh, you need to be able to adjust to the situation as well as a producer because sometimes you'll have people who would sit there and just not want to take direction from you so you'd be asked as a producer you know just tell me what I need to do better right tell me what will make the song better and then once you convey that message depending on how you've done it because you know there are different ways to communicate communication is always key how you communicate to people you know some the artist will say no but it doesn't work but this is this is the vision that I had for the song and that's that's not gonna work right so you need to as a producer working with people 
you know, try and find ways to communicate something and make somebody believe that they need to at least try something new. Again, I come back to the song that I'm going to mix and I'm really trying hard not to mention the artist's name or the song's name. You know, the artist must release those details. It's a she. She came to me and she started singing and she sounded great. But for me, that wasn't that, uh, that that's not what she sounds like. It's not actually who she is. That's not her voice. Right. Because I feel like there's an expectation for people to hear somebody in a certain way when they sing based on the the, you know, the way they grew up, where they stayed, the type of music that they listen to, uh, the people, different people that they associated with. And that's not the case. And I mean, especially in Cape Town, people love to sing covers. So if somebody writes a song and they say, no, I used Adele as an inspiration. When they start singing the song, they start singing it with Adele tendencies, you know, to sound like Adele when she's doing her music. So... I try and get the artist to sing in their own voice. And even when the art, this artist heard her dry vocals in the track that I'm going to mix, you know, so everything is aligned, all the production is done, everything's in audio. When she heard her voice, she said, wow, that sounds so great. And it doesn't even sound like me. And then I told her, but the great thing is, is that it actually is you. Right? So I'd say, Ryan, who gave me that question, thank you so much. As an artist, be open to try different things. Because remember, the producer may not always be right. Like, just because I'm a producer doesn't mean I'm going to sit on one side of the fence. Because I'm an artist as well. Now, as a producer, we don't get everything right. But we like to try different things so that, are, so that there are different options. And, ooh, I better be careful now. Somebody, a good friend of mine's manager just joined. I gave her a hard time the last time we met. All jokes, guys. Nothing serious. Hi, Kim. Um, so, be open to try different things. Be, be, be willing to learn. I mean, I've been doing this for a, lot, for a very long time, but I'm still learning every day. I'm still looking for new ways to do things. I'm still looking for... New ways to write music, new inspiration, um, and and just to try and make more music, help people to make more music. Um, again, I can't stress enough how blessed we are to have so many talented people in Cape Town, in South Africa, around the world, and we actually don't give ourselves credit. And and I I, I don't mean credit to me or you or I, I mean to us as a collective. Right? There are always these, and I'm going to say this again, I've mentioned it in a previous video. We talk about these little cliques and silos and people who just want to work together and not share the, what do you call it? Uh, well, I don't want to say that there's a monopoly, but, you know, people work in cliques or there's a perception that people work in cliques. But what I find is, is that the people, a lot of the time, people who are saying, you know, um, the industry is very small. Those are the ones who don't want to interact with other people. They don't want to meet other people. What I find crazy is that when people come and work with me and we do a song, I tell everybody, listen, I'm not the only person you can work with. They, you can go to this one and 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 they all sound great. Now... I'd like to take you to, and, and I'm actually jumping topic now because somebody just joined this video. I did a song for an artist, and I mentioned his name earlier, in 2013. And it was a good song. I, I just think, you know, people weren't ready for it. And, and in fact, I don't even think we were ready for it. But a song was born. And on Monday this week we got together and we decided that we're going to do we're going to try and do the song justice so we're actually doing a new version of the song and you know there's just like like my uh, or my personal view on when i know we have something really good is when what we've created sounds like a song and there's nothing in it 
Now that sounds absolutely insane, but what I mean is, instead of having full production, let's just say you've got the chords for the song, and you're just singing, singing lyrics, but it already sounds good, that's how I know we have a good song. And this happened on Monday, where we just got into a vibe, and you know, the, in the intention and the vision that we had for the song was there without us doing anything fantastic. Like it was literally a, a chord progression, a bass, and some light drums just to keep the groove going. And it sounds absolutely fantastic. I cannot wait for us to finish that song or actually get into it. Because the artist is actually busy doing some of the, uh, the songwriting and then we'll get together, record that vocals. And then oh, I can't wait. I'm so excited for that one. Uh, what else am I excited for? Uh, Janet Ricketts album. I'm excited for everything that coming that's coming out of Arkham Studios in Cape Town. Uh, I mean Iran. Um, let's see some of the artists that I'm working with that I can't, I don't want to speak about yet. Um, but you'll know pretty soon. Kaimak, Malum, The Englishman, uh, Ryan, Leiru. You name it, I just love music, and we should all love music. And speaking about music, I made a post last week, or I posted something last week, where I said that eight years ago, and I'm actually gonna grab my guitar, which I hope is tuned. If it's not tuned, I'll just look good with a guitar on my lap. Um, eight years ago, I sat down to write the song because I felt, again, inspired to write the song. Let me see if this thing is tuned. No, it's not. I'll just look cool with you know, my album cover. Um, so, I sat down to write the song and I sat down with a guitar. Sometimes I use a keyboard, piano, sometimes a guitar. In this instance, I sat down with a guitar. And you know when you're just inspired to write something good, but you want something just to just feel good? Um, like, you know, no, there's no recognition wanted. You don't want it to be a, a um, radio release. You don't want to sell it, none of those things. SMZ, how are you doing, bro? Thanks for joining. Thank you for the support. Um, I sat down to do this song. And, you know, music has changed people's lives in so many ways. Um, and, and, and uh, I mean, sometimes you hear a song and it just brings back so many memories. Sometimes good memories, sometimes bad memories. But they memories and all of our experiences actually shape who we are as a person. So... I mean, how powerful is it that you can listen to one piece, one piece of a song, even if it's just the intro to a song, and it brings back so many memories that things that you actually forgot happened all of a sudden come back after you hear a song. And I mean, I grew up listening to different types of music, and and I mean, whether it was Peaches and Herb that my mom and dad were playing in the car while we were driving to. Neisner or George or Plet P.E. or wherever it was, you know, Peaches and Herb was the thing. Um, you know, whether it was Michael Jackson, who was actually had a very, very big influence on, 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 on me musically. Um, Boys to Men, you know, I, Boys to Men taught me how to harmonize. Um, I'll never forget uh, Francois Mellem Frankie. Um, he had a big hit with uh, Sam World called Feel Good. Um, I did a song for him and, it, if, and, and, and the song that I did for him was actually the first song that I ever did for an artist and he's such a good friend of mine I have so much respect for him uh, because he trusted me enough to do a song with him and write a song with him but he allowed me to do the harmonies in the song and he said, Mo, this is like Motown. It sounds like it's minor. It sounds like it's in minor, but it's not. But it works with the song. Even the song's not in minor. Um, and, you know, I learned that from boys to men. Um, everything I do in terms of harmonies and, 
you know, the way I sing really comes from my love for some of the greatest boys to men songs that have been released. Um, you know, and again, now I'm speaking about boys to men and now all these memories are coming back and I'm not going off point. I promise I'm still on the point of my song. And I mean, I'll never forget my, when I, when I went to high school, I started performing. Um, it was, I mean, I always loved singing. Uh, my mom always, um, you know, she had to go at me when I was at, when I had to study, I needed to do my homework. I didn't because I was singing. Or she thought I wasn't doing anything because I was singing. But I was singing while I was doing my homework. Or while I was studying. So while I'm writing my exams, I'm singing. And that's how I remembered to, you know, all of the work. And I'll never forget I was in high school. And I was actually, you know, somebody dared me to sing on stage. And, you know, my family, my friends, they were just like, Oh, yeah, you know, somebody's going to, Muneev's just going to perform at this... Uh, school variety show for Arbor Day, I think it was, and a few friends of mine uh, joined me on stage and we sang Four Seasons of Loneliness from uh, Boys to Men. And, you know, there was such a rush, you know, being on stage, you know, there's just a different feeling that you get, and I loved it so much. I then auditioned for a show or to be one of the performers at, at, a show, at a show that Africa Blaze was hosting. Um, and it was at Garlandale High School. And that was actually the first time that my family came to watch a show. Because I'd, I'd, I'd done a lot of shows before that. All at high school. Or for different high schools, fashion shows. You know, those old th things. But this Africa Blaze show, I sang End of the Road with of my friends and I'll never forget you know coming off you know that feeling of performing and getting off stage and the show was over and my parents coming to me and and you know my, I'll never forget my dad said my boy wow that was absolutely fantastic and the crazy thing is while we're driving home in the car he's saying my boy sing 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 where's the backtrack where's the backtrack and that time the car still had a, a, a cassette tape um yo jared ricketts how you doing bro what's up patrick Murad? so in terms of the song that i that you know i posted about last week that i said i would release this week it's done it's already uploaded somewhere I'll post the link after this, um, but I'm just, I just want to tell you a bit about the song. So I wrote this song to try and, you know, pay tribute in s to, to my musical influences and what music makes me feel and, you know, how it's contributed to my life, how it's still part of my life, how, how it can change people's emotions, people's sadness to happiness, happiness to sadness bring back all of these memories i just wanted to write a simple song that just felt good to me so not for anyone else for me i wrote the song for me and my vision for with for the song was for it to be something that was imperfect something that had a live feel to it so i've kept the guitars um i, I mean i i recorded the um there's some keys in the song which I recorded live uh, as audio, right? So not as media, I recorded as audio from a Roland E09 straight into my audio interface, stereo keyboard. Um, I programmed some live drums, um, all in logic, um, program, programmed live bass, if that makes sense. I programmed live bass. And, you know, just to give it this live feel so that things are not perfectly on time. And... You know, on stage, I'm sure Jared will tell you, he's done a lot of shows recently. You know, there's just the energy on stage where things just feel good. And this song makes me feel good. Um, when I pick up a guitar, one of the first songs that I play is this song. Um, and this song is called Giving Back. Now, I'm going to play a snippet of the song on this live video. Uh, but like I said, what I'll do is I'll post a link to the song immediately after this video is completed and then I've got another song lined up that will release in 
two weeks from now right so here we go I'm gonna play the song Hopefully that came out okay over the live video. That's the song. Um, I'm gonna post this song after the video, uh, after this video, so you can have a listen to it um, in your own time. Um, you know, send me a message, leave me a comment, send me a WhatsApp if you have my number. Email me. It's munib.chalant at gmail.com. Let me know what you think about the song. Um, again, this is a song I wrote eight years ago, something that I should never have have held on to and kept in my on my little hard drive and not shared with the world. Um, so that was the song is just my tribute to music and, and you know something that I love doing, something that I love sharing. Um, I know a lot of people hate hearing their own voice. Uh, I do as well. I hate hearing my own voice. I hate hearing my own songs if I am the one singing it. Speaking about my singing, I spoke about myself performing over the years and doing all of these different songs. Funny enough, there's actually quite a lot of people who don't know that I sing or that I used to perform on stage. I used to perform with one of the biggest artists coming out of Cape Town. In fact, we were neighbors. Um, and we sang for years. We wrote songs together and we're really just great friends. Um, so yes, I do sing. Um, I have, what do you call it? I used to be afraid to release my own, my own music. I'm not afraid anymore. So this is why I'm releasing music. I'm taking my own advice that I've been giving you over the last couple of weeks, which is just to make more music, write more music, release more music. So that's it from me today, unless anybody has any questions. Um, if you do, um, yeah, let's see if anybody has any questions. You know, just leave a question in the comments. Um, Ryan also had another question about mic placement and where to stand when recording, etc. Um, I wasn't sure on whether I'd, I want to address that here because I feel like it's a very technical question. Um, I'm a technical guy. Um, I use it creatively to make music. I'm also a creative and I marry those two worlds. So is there a good way to 
record vocals through a condenser microphone? Yes. Is there a wrong way? Not really, eh? Uh, depending on the sound that you want. Um, I'd say Ryan trial and error. Let me just answer the question. Trial and error. I'll do a video where I actually address this, um, you know, with some visual aids and I can show you how to do it. Um, one thing I didn't show you in my little studio tour was the type of microphones that I use. So I've got two condenser microphones that I use. Um, why two? Uh, I said I love to record stereo guitars. So that's one of the main reasons why I have it. And also to record uh, guitar um, songwriters who have guitars, I make up the guitar, I make up the singer. Even though they might have an electric acoustic like this one, so one that has a pickup, I still make up the guitar just because it sounds better. It sounds more natural. So that's why I have two mics. So the one mic that I have that most people should know about is the road nta1 or nt1a the nt1a Whew, forgot the name of my own mic and i've got that mic for the past mm, let me see now 2018 so i have that mic for the last 14 years and i still use it today there's nothing wrong with it brilliant sounding mic you don't need anything else if you have that if you're a singer songwriter and then I also have this mic which is an AKG C214 I know a lot of people if you in the music industry and you're an engineer or producer you might know the AKG C414 um, this sounds almost like that it's also a great sounding mic, but it cancels out a lot of the things behind the mic and around the mic, which is the reason why I bought this. So you'll see there's a similar theme when I speak about all of the equipment that I've got. I've got everything for a, I've bought everything for a particular purpose, except my Focusrite ISA2 preamp that I bought as a gift to myself, simply because I got it at an absolute steal and I bought it brand new if I tell you the price you wouldn't believe me if you're interested to know <laughs> what I paid for it brand new uh, send me an inbox and I'll let you know what I'm what I paid for it um, so I'm releasing my own music believe it or not I'm working on uh, I'm producing songs for other artists I'm writing for other artists. I'm mixing tracks for other artists. I'm mastering tracks for other artists. Um, I answer a lot of questions. So on the music side, I just want to say thank you to each and every one of you and everybody out there for, you know, trusting me with your music. Um, I mean, somebody once asked me more, but when you're mixing music, you know, how do you know it's going to sound great? How do you know that how do you know what the artist wants to hear? I say again, communication. So I speak to people. A lot of the time, if you're an engineer, and it's changed a little bit over the last year or two, people want to work with you for your taste in music, for your ear for music. So for example, um, if somebody comes to you and it's a pop song, a pop song sounds slightly different to a hip hop track in terms of low end. But sometimes you can marry the two where you have a pop track with a hip hop low end and you need to know how to get those two to work together. Uh, sorry if I'm getting a bit technical, but music changes, sound evolves. Things that you hear on the radio are old songs already. When I say old songs, I mean somebody made it long ago. Again, in episode 3 of this series, I spoke about how Bruno Mars released his album in November 2016 and nobody wanted to look or hear about Finesse. It was my favorite track on the album because it reminded me of Boys to Men. Then, 
fast forward to 2018 and now finesse is a hit right so when i so uh, what i say uh, or when i say that music that you hear on the radio is already old it's already not relevant it doesn't mean that as a listener you shouldn't enjoy it but what i mean is as a music producer as an aspiring artist take inspiration from that music and make something new stop trying to be the next bruno mars the next maroon five the next adele the next beyonce the next whoever you should be the first you right trust yourself make more music right i didn't see any questions um before i end this video let me see no questions yeah madam i got the apollo twin enjoying it how are you uncle thank you for the support thank you so much um if there are no questions uh, <laughs> i'm also trying the 300 beer day eh? <laughs> thanks frankie um, guys, I spoke about Francois Malam earlier in uh, uh, in this video. He joined. That's him commenting on this video right now. I have so much love and respect for this guy. Um, you know, he's the guy that trusted me. Again, like I said, he's the first person who I ever produced a song for. We spent so much time writing, producing, recording a track. Um, I actually did a new mix of the track. I uh, just need to get the, the relevant... Um, permissions to get it out um, and release it and post it out there um, but once I do you'll all hear about it um, th again thank you so much if you'd like me to address or answer any questions please inbox me um, leave me a comment you can go to my producer page it's www.facebook.com forward slash gimme mo 85 that's where I'll be posting a lot of the work that I'm doing uh, who I'm working with, yes, some of it might be a bit cryptic because I'm not playing any sound, but I'm showing you that I'm recording, or I might show you the back of somebody's head so you can't see who it is. Drop me, you know, drop me a line, let me know whether it's software, gear, um, techniques, songwriting techniques, sounds, um, what to do, what not to do, whatever it is, if it's music related contact me and I'll answer that in my next video that's it that's it for episode 4 again immediately after this video on all of my social media platforms I'll be posting the link to the song that I just played this uh, video will be up on YouTube and the song will also be up on YouTube uh, in the next half an hour or so thank you so much for the support guys I really appreciate it till next week ciao